You probably found this video searching for Porsche Cayenne oil change or service light reset or 9YA oil change. If you did, you're in the right spot because in this video, I'm gonna walk you through an oil change on this 2020 base Cayenne. This video will also be for people with a turbo or GTS model. There should only be small differences in the process. At the end of the video, we'll show you how to reset your service indicator light so you don't need to go to the dealership anymore. I'm gonna put links in the video description below to all the parts and tools that I use. So if you're missing anything, just click on the links and you'll see exactly what was used in the video. Okay, the first thing you're gonna need is a T25 and a T30 Torx. And you could put that on a little power screwdriver like this or just a regular screwdriver and that's to get that front panel off underneath the oil drain plug. To remove the oil drain plug on the OEM um, drain plug, it's a T45. So you'll loosen that and that'll pop off. The replacement drain plug that I have, it's compatible. But on this one, it's not Torx anymore. It's going to be a re regular Allen wrench. So to reassemble, I used a six um, hex to reinstall. All right, then the other items you're gonna need, some type of cleaner, like brake cleaner, paper towels. Um, on the base model, you'll need seven quarts of this oil. Make sure it says ESP 0W20. If you have the turbo, you're gonna need eight quarts. You'll need a flathead screwdriver to remove the air intake rubber hose. Um, to remove the oil filter housing, you'll need a 32 millimeter socket set. I'll put a link in the video description below for all of these tools. And there's even a better one than this that I would probably buy next time. And you'll need an extension. I don't know what the size is on this, but pretty good long extension. You'll need a torque wrench because you want to torque everything back properly. And you'll need a number seven metric um, wrench to loosen that air intake. You'll need the hex bit like I talked about. You'll need a new drain plug with the crush washer. You replace this every time. I'll put a link in the video description for this exact one. This is the uh, oil filter. This comes with a new rubber O-ring. So make sure that you replace the O-ring every time you replace the filter. Okay, then I use this small screwdriver to pry off the rubber O-ring gently without scarring the oil filter housing. Okay, one of the first things you're gonna wanna do is go on a short drive with your car and warm up the oil. This makes it come out quicker and makes the whole process easier in my mind. With the engine oil now warm, lay down some protective coverings for your driveway and a long piece of cardboard that makes it really easy so you can slide under the car and remove the belly panel. If you have air suspension, you can lift up the car and have better access. Or if you have um, like something like a rhino ramp that you can drive up on top of, that's easier too. But I was able to slide under the car and still access anything without lifting the car up at all. You'll want to remove all of the T25 screws on the outer perimeter of the belly panel. There's a lot of them. So remove all of those, and then there'll be two large T30 bolts in the center, and that's what's holding up the weight of the entire panel. So once you release the last two of these T30s, it will come down nice and you can move it out of the way. The stock drain bolt is gonna be a T45 that's torqued in place around 37 foot pounds. Remove that and the oil will gush out, and make sure you have room for up to seven or eight quarts of oil. Make sure both the nut and the crush washer come off of the drain pan. There's a crush washer and you don't want it to stay in place and stick to the drain pan. Now that the oil's draining, we can start working on top. Pop open the front hood and press the release on the hood latch. Now we need to remove the top of the air box. It's held in place by two metal latches, one on the passenger and one on the driver's side. Once you pull those out left and right, it's ready to be lifted up and off. You'll want to pull forward towards the center of the car and lift up shortly after. You can set this aside somewhere careful to not get scratched. Now we need to remove the actual air box which has the air filter inside. To remove this, we need to remove both rubber air intake scoops by sliding them forward and they come off easily. 
You'll also need to remove the oil filter filler neck by pushing in on this clip and sliding out and pushing it out of the way. Lastly, we need to loosen the air intake hose using a seven millimeter metric wrench. You can try to use a socket, but there's not much space. And if you strip it, it's gonna be much more difficult in the long run. If the air intake neck is not coming off easily, which it didn't for me, you can loosen the hose clamp more and start to slide it left and right while yanking off. If that doesn't work, you can use a large flathead screwdriver and pry it off carefully, but try not to nick or scratch the plastics. Now you can lift up and forward to remove the air box and set it aside. You'll want to cover your air intake with a rag so no dirt or foreign objects can fall inside of it. There's going to be a large torsion bar across the engine bay that impedes your access to the oil filter. It's held in place by four or six torque bolts and it doesn't look that difficult to remove but you'll have to remove a lot more of the plastic engine bay covers which I didn't want to mess with. So you can either remove that bar and the whole process will be super simple or you can just leave it in place and work a little harder around it. Using your 32 millimeter socket, crack open the oil filler cap and you'll hear air start to suck in and oil will begin flowing faster down the drain. So let all that dirty oil um, drain out before you put a new drain plug in place. Now you can carefully unscrew the oil cap and you'll need to separate the filter element from the cap. The filter likes to snap into place on the cap and with the engine bar placed, there's not enough room to remove both at the same time. So what I did was use a flathead screwdriver to push down on the filter cartridge and pop it off the cap and I left it on the engine side. Then I was able to squeeze out the oil filter cap forward underneath the metal bar. Then I was able to remove the oil filter from the back side of the bar and lifted that straight up. Clean out the oil filter cap by spraying it with brake cleaner and paper towels and then carefully pry off the rubber o-ring and lube up a new o-ring with fresh oil to pop it back in place. The o-ring comes in the oil filter box. If you do not lube up the new o-ring, it can get caught, pinched, and will not seal properly and this is a critical step. Take your new oil filter element and push it into the housing until it snaps into place. Then put the cap back on top and tighten it no more than 25 Nm or 18 foot-pounds of force. It's very little and you do not want to over tighten this. While you should have a torque wrench, um, you could potentially tighten it by hand with no tools and that will be close to 18 foot-pounds. Now we're ready to reassemble the air box and put it back in place. You'll want to start at the firewall side and push in and get it to click over there and then push down. Then you can reassemble the rubber air intake on the left and right side, and then the center air intake tube. I found that the tube was a bit hard to slide back in place, so I added some water-based KY lube and it popped right back in, and I tightened it up with the hose clamp, but not too tight. Then I popped the oil filler neck back in place and put the top of the air box on by pressing again on the firewall side first. Then with it fully down, I clipped it in place with the two metal clips. Next, I installed the new drain plug. This is the one that is linked below by Conoco. And I used a six millimeter hex. I put it in by hand first, and then I cleaned off any of the residual oil. And then here I am torquing it to the standard 37 foot pounds of torque. After it's torqued up, you'll wanna wash it off one more time and that way you'll notice any bit of oil leak if it was to happen. And then lastly, I put on the lightweight belly pan using the two 25 T25 bolts in the center. I started by adding six quarts of oil as I knew it was gonna take seven, but I wasn't sure how much actually drained and I didn't wanna overdo it. I started the engine after having a little more than six quarts and I checked the oil level electronically. You do this by running the engine for a few minutes, then turning the car off on level ground. Then turn the ignition switch back on without starting the engine. Let it sit there for up to two minutes and then it will register. If it's low, it'll tell you how much oil to add. In my case, it said add up to 1.3 quarts. So to be careful, I added one quart 
as it's always easier to keep adding more than to remove oil. Now that the oil change was complete, you need to reset the service indicator light. This goes off automatically when you drive either 10,000 miles between oil changes or it's been 12 months since the last reset. In this case, the car has only been driven five or 6,000 miles, but it's reached 12 months since the last oil change, and that is the recommended oil interval for these cars. In the past, most cars allow you to reset this on the steering wheel or by um, cycling the throttle pedal a number of times. But on the newer Cayennes, they don't allow this anymore. Most people think this is a money grab thing to cause the customer to come back to the dealership and um, make more money. In order to reset the light on your own, you'll need a computer that costs between $200 to $500. And I'll put a link in the video description below for the exact one that I used and another one that I recommend. These are not sponsored at all. I purchased this out of my own pocket. While it does seem expensive, a single oil change at the dealership will easily cost between five to $600. So buying a $300 computer one time and spending $70 in oils and filters it is still much cheaper than taking it to the dealership just one time. The computer I got is called the iCarSoft CRM Bluetooth Edition. I put this little adapter into the diagnostic port of the car and then I turn on the tablet. The tablet has all sorts of vehicles and you simply click through until you find the car that's yours. Now the first time I did this, it didn't work. I was frustrated and I was wondering why this computer would not reset the 9YA and newer Cayenne. It was listed as compatible and recommended by a few people. I connected the tablet to Wi-Fi and ran an update on the software. It installed new firmware for the device and then it updated all the different models with new software. Once the device was updated, it was able to reset the service light and oil indicator, no problem. So if you run into this issue like me, make sure you update this device to the latest software. Okay, that's all for now. If you guys notice anything I did wrong or could do better next time, please let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there's a lot of knowledgeable people on here that can help make it easier for the next person. If there's any other specific Porsche Cayenne content you want me to film, please list that in the comments as well. And as always, I'll put a link to all of the exact items and tools and then a list of exactly what order I did this oil change in. So you could print that out and just work from there. All right. Well, thank you for watching and please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.